welcome back to the channel guys i am on the ex30 fantastic wheel check it out yes indeed yes indeed this is back to some normalcy the wheel in one short sentence back to normalcy okay that is how i look at it because the msp was a great wheel the rs was a great wheel okay sherman great wheel why what do they all have in common they all have form factor in common all right form factor now for the past couple months we had the v13 and we had the master pro even the commander pro uh taking the spotlight of what has been introduced to the euc populace but we were still craving in the back of our minds the possibility of these older form factors that i just mentioned to include suspension look at this now you see this bad road here now yesterday sensei vegan and i went through this all right and he was clearly restricted by the setup of his sherman because his sherman does not have suspension however if you look at the size and the form factor of this beast what do you see you see portability you see portability and i took some time yesterday to set up the suspension for what suits conditions like this what i did was i i pumped it up to over 300 maybe 320 psi and then i took the little knob brought it all the way to the right and a little bit maybe a few ticks to the left to give just a little bit of dampening check this out this is what i mean when i say suspension suspension on a small wheel such as this is the answer to ultimate to the ultimate riding experience yes some sense of normalcy has returned and this is the ex30 my friends this is indeed the ex30 so what i can say about this wheel is that the GOAD has not forgotten what we all care about, and that is true performance on a well-balanced machine. Now, the Master was a great wheel, don't get me wrong, but what was the main complaint of that wheel? It was pretty tall, and there are times where you're turning, making sharp turns, and you do experience what is called top heaviness. It makes sense, because the wheel is unnaturally designed. The way it's designed, so the, oh, the original wheels, whether that's from Ninebot, In Motion, and even the Goad, they all had one thing in common. Very different designs, but they all had one thing in common. And that was the center of what you call gravity, I call center of balance, okay? So the center of balance of all these wheels back then, before suspension and before this craziness of tall, short, or whatever, minus the 18S, was that they were all low to the ground, giving us a really sturdy form of center of balance per the form factor of the wheel. Now we have this machine, all right, which is perfect in terms of design, but in addition, we have this in the back, what is called suspension. Yes, we have suspension. In my opinion, the goat has never left um, the arena of small portable wheels. I was craving a portable wheel because to me, the one deciding factor that pretty much determines whether a wheel is all around the best wheel in the world is how portable it is. Yes, you can be the fastest wheel. Yes, you can have suspension. Yes, you can have all this technology and safety and all that stuff. But at the end of the day, what was the original nature or the original purpose of EUCs. It was portability. It was personal, okay? 
it was personal that was what it was all about and I I'm not saying that these companies forgot about that but they took a break now the master pro is not a, a step back for a big goat because they did have the monster right the monster and the monster pro so this is not a step back for them at all however in motion I could say that was indeed a step back because they've always had portable wheels and with the v13 I'm not going to say that is a step away for them, although it is. I'm just going to say it was a step where they decided to hop into a certain market to test the waters um, of their new technology. So hopefully with the four categories of wheels that in motion it will be releasing soon, it will go back to portability, which is what they were known for. Portable uh, electric unicycles from in motion. concern is that tire. This is the EX30, all right? So I'm a little bit late, but that's okay. So let me start talking about some of the things I like about this machine. I like the pads. This is probably one of the best looking pads, in my opinion, from Bagode. You can remove this right here. You can remove this. The only thing that did not come with the pad was anything for the back, which this is supposed to take care of. But I ended up adding the Grizzla to the back. As far as the top foam, there's no pinching, unlike the Master Pro, which is a pretty tall wheel. It pretty much comes up to almost here. Sometimes you do feel a little pinch on the edge right here. There's none of this here because this is a small, portable, shorter wheel. The pedals are high enough compared to something like the Master. But then again, pedal height seems to be related to the height of the wheel itself, plus the suspension settings. This just works perfectly for me. So I absolutely love the recessed lights. It could be a little brighter, but that's true for all big old wheels. The overall structure of this wheel is extremely sturdy. Yes, you might be concerned about all the bolts that hold everything together, but compared to something like the Master Pro, this design appears a lot more rigid and has enough quality in the frame to make me very happy. Like some of you, I really like the metal case for the batteries, better than the plastic ones that came with the Master Pro, which easily cracked in a less than 35 mile per hour crash. The motor is a C40, which is more torque on paper than previous motors. But if you're not an aggressive rider or racer, none of this will really matter to you. A good addition are these grab handles. It's very unique to Bigode. Unlike the Sherman, the original one that is, these are recessed and they're hidden. They're out of the way, which you could say is good or bad, but it's there. It's a very good addition for carrying something that's a hundred pounds. Ah. Hundred pounds. Woo! Very convenient. The packaging on this is perfect. And like I said earlier, it's a very good transition back to some normalcy because it's so portable. It's like an EXN Plus. Makes sense because they both have EX in the name. Something I cannot ignore in here is the suspension. The suspension of this wheel makes great sense for its size because I never hear any creaks or bottoming out compared to the Master Pro, for example. In order to get the same quality out of the Master Pro suspension, I will have to increase the PSI way above 360 because of its sheer size. I weigh anywhere from 174 to 184 pounds depending on when I ate last. And the overall experience with the EX30 suspension has been very consistent for me. Now, the screen on this, like other bigodes, other recent bigodes, is a really good highlight of this machine because it's extremely visible when seated. So I can take a quick glance when speeding through traffic. 
Now some people say that this digit right here does absolutely nothing because it will never go in the three digits, right? But have you tried? <laughs> I'm just playing. The beeps are noticeable, but way more noticeable when seated. Same with the Master Pro. That's even with my earbuds on. I don't recommend you blasting your earbuds, but just a side note, the tail light is a way better implementation than that of the Master Pro because there are no visible wires that are out of place. So if you look, it's completely hidden as it should be. Also, this part is extremely sturdy. The brackets for securing the battery cables is a very good touch, um, which shows Bigot really took safety seriously with this one, especially with this being a utilitarian and modular design. Let me show you real close. So if you pull this back, you can see there are these brackets holding the cable wire for the batteries, all right? They're very secure, very good addition here. So I would argue this is not a shrunken Master Pro, but a completely different approach to modular design. One issue I had with the Master Pro was that the the support between the battery and the mainframe was one piece of metal that easily broke off if the wheel crashed at the right angle. With the EX30, it seems Bigode took notes and fortified that area with extra metal and bolts so that the battery casing does not rely on one particular piece of metal. So these bolts hold down this metal right here, okay? And the battery attaches to that piece of metal. Whereas the Master Pro, this piece of metal did not exist. The battery pretty much connected to the mainframe at the top. There was pretty much no leverage at all. So all the force was applied on one piece. As with other modular designs from Bagode, the original pads has a dual purpose in both protecting the battery during crashes as well as leverage for the rider when accelerating, jumping, or braking. The overall design is more practical than beautiful, but for me it is good looking, at least from the sides, the back, and the top. So as for the front design, it leans more towards a practical nature than trying to get you to like how it looks. The rest stand, as stated in the beginning of the video, is a more serious design implementation than any other I've seen. This thing is solid, mostly because of the rubber shoes at the bottom, which can recoil when the wheel is slightly pushed, unlike that of the Master Pro, which simply falls over if pushed a little too hard. This is what I'm talking about right here. So if I tap it, the rubber acts as a spring, unlike the Master Pro, which does not have that feature so it'll just fall right over and it's pretty sturdy see that a more solid flat surface is a better option okay here we have some steps for you step riders Let me whoa there we go that's a lot better if you look at the kickstand okay it looks like there's significant amount of distance obviously adding weight to the wheel will cause that distance to disappear so I don't recommend this for staircase stunts it's up to you though or remove it you have two bolts on this side two bolts on the other side remove it and you can do all the off-roading step whatever you want also the suspension here is way better than the master pro as i stated earlier i don't have to entirely fill this thing up beyond 360 psi in order to get a good quality ride now if you look closely i weigh about 174 to 185 you can see the rivets that's because what i've done is filled it up to about 360 moved it all the way to the right and maybe five or six clicks to the left and that is my suspension settings with that i've never once experienced bottoming out and this has a very little travel as you can tell but the master pro is a massive wheel so you can expect that there will be some bottoming out if you're not able to increase the psi to a good enough amount I recommend you take some time to get to know the setup of the suspension and also the amount of pressure you're going to put in the tire because that will also determine your rideability and, and riding comfort. My top reason for loving this wheel is the size. Just for a little while, it seemed we were never going back in the direction of something close to being portable. But this takes the cake. It has everything I would expect from a modern suspension wheel in a small enough package, from form to battery size, motor output, large display, seated riding, a well-placed trolley handle, and a lot more. Trawling this thing around is not an issue. And Bigot has done a really good job since the master. Yes, sometimes if you go jumping or something like that, this thing tends to pop up. But overall, this design is the best design. It is a little finicky, but how often are you gonna be trawling this thing around? You know what I mean? This is great, great design. 
Now, in a way, I'm glad the original Master wasn't the future of small wheels because of its top heaviness, insanely high pedals, brittle design, and low battery capacity. While I love the design of the OG Master, and yes, it did pave the way for these future Bigot designs, I'm happy the EX30 now exists as a final statement that portability and EUCs with large battery capacity plus a heavy duty suspension can go hand in hand with not too much compromise. Now for some of the things I do not like. The first thing is the knobby tire. This seems to be the boat of contention for many new wheels. The first thing we tend to criticize is the tire. This is no exception. The knobby tire is no good. It's not the worst, but sometimes it does catch if your turns aren't intentional. The knobby tire isn't like that of the KS22 or the V13, which I love, which are more rounded at the edges, making for a very smooth ride. Smooth and predictable ride. Clearly Bigot intended to satisfy the requirements of both street riders and some trail riders, but I think that a more rounded knobby tire would have been a better option. These are some minor things to complain about, but the sticky tape on the pads are subpar. You will have to use Velcro in order to get them to stick properly. Here, it wasn't compromised because I'm guessing this one wasn't removed a lot. So here's the thing. While it is true that the tire on this is easy to remove, it's not easy to replace. In other words, it's not easy to put the motor back into its location. Why? If you've ever taken this apart, there's a spacer, metal spacer in here that goes between the frame of the wheel and the motor. Now, once you remove all four motor bolts, this spacer falls off. And in order to put it back, you will have to remove one of these battery packs in order to align it with the holes for the motor bolts. And that can be annoying because <laughs> it's kind of deceptive actually, because taking it out is a lot easier than putting it back in. It would have made things a lot easier if there were recessed areas where the spacer could rest inside so that you don't have to constantly fiddle with it while putting it back in. So. How does it ride? Well, at this point, all new high performance wheels are extremely fast. So that's not really a benchmark to go by. Wheels exceeding 50 plus miles an hour are in a category of their own. We all know that. Now, the Master Pro, the Master, uh, Sherman S, V13, and now the EX30. There are probably some I forgot, just to name a few all can reach 50 plus miles an hour. Now, what is important to mention is how fast they get there and how stable they are at those speeds. The Master Pro rides like a smooth Cadillac. You almost don't feel the weight and raw power of the motor. It's not an issue to accelerate to 50 miles per hour. The motor is so smooth that not even the V13 can compare. Top speed here is 35 miles an hour. You can obviously do more than that. I'm doing 50 right now. 50 miles an hour right now, no big deal. So that's another thing about this Pagode is that it seems like I get to 50 miles an hour a lot faster than I can with the uh, in motion. The EX30, however, right, is a very different wheel in size. So the experience will be very different. Let's see. The Goad EX30, raw and uncut. Let's do this. So what do I feel? I feel no fighting. The weight is 100 pounds, but coming from 56 to 66 pound wheels, MSB, wheels of that caliber, but then going up to the V13, Master Pro, Monster Pro, and then back to something like this, kind of conditioned my thinking and my muscles to accept this a lot more. Let's do some trail riding here. Now I did say that the tire was something that Bigot attempted to do to satisfy the desires of both street riders and off-road types. Let's hit it. Woo! Now, what I would change is the dihedral of this pedal. Bring it up a little bit if you plan on doing competitive riding because I do feel a little bit of freedom that I'm not really into and the wheel once the tire sorry once again is catching not into that but let's go Woo!
I'm not feeling the pads much, which is kind of good. I'm used to having the pads hug my shins and my leg, but this seems to do quite well. See, I have a lot of play, whereas my custom pads are really tight, but uh, I don't mind this. I don't mind this. You know why I don't mind it? My custom pads are designed so that my leg can come out and this is perfect. The Clark pads and some other pads tend to come out a little bit too far, which keeps me trapped if I wanna come out a little bit. Like if I wanna sit down at a moment's notice or something like that. Oh, pedal scrape, pedal scrape. If you wanna make tight turns, you will scrape the pedals. But you don't have to. Oh, 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 see that? Let's do it again. Let's try not to scrape. There we go. Accelerate, let's go. Woo, I didn't feel those bumps at all. Already it. Woo, man. Acceleration is insane. Wow. It's like a bullet. And this is the stock pads I'm jumping with. Now, don't get me wrong. I love the Master Pro. Absolutely do. But you cannot ignore the sheer size of the wheel. It's for a different purpose altogether. Woo! Suspension on this is beautiful. Ha ha ha. Nice. When you bottom out, you feel the limit of the suspension travel. With here, you can feel it, but you can actually mitigate how much of that travel is maximized or reached. You know, like for example, I could do this, step on it, or I could just land it. Beautiful. Once again, this is all due to the weight of the wheel. Let's see what we got up here. Some trail riding here. This is what I meant by off-roading. You could do some of this. Woo! Woo! Wow! Oh my gosh, it's just so light. For a 100-pound wheel, man, I think the suspension is the reason I'm feeling so daring. Wow! I'm not even locked in completely. Come on. Yeah, that's what the knobby is good for. Trails like this, where you won't have to worry about. Let's see, let's, come on. Let's see how hard I could turn. Oh, oh, Boop. let's do a, oh, oh, nice. Whew. A little daring there. Break, break, break. Let me see if I can do that thing, skid. Hold on. Yeah, it's very bouncy, guys. This is great. This is my setting. I love bouncy settings. I don't like it to be too hard. If you're a heavier person, you might need the dampening to be a little bit harder. Woo! Let's sit. Look at that. This is why I like the stock pads, because I get to sit whenever I want. Woo! what I'm talking about. One word, playful. Woo! That was high. Holy smokes. And I didn't feel once bottoming out. Hop, hop, hop. Guys, this is the stock pads, guys. Stock pads, man. All right, so highly capable wheel. Oh my gosh. What? Wow. Wow. Whoa, 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 whoa. Woo! You see that wobble? That was due to the pads not being completely locking 
for my legs. So I felt it the first time, that was a warning. The second time was a serious dire warning. I didn't ignore it, I stopped. But yeah, you don't wanna jump and land while you're wobbling in the air. Oh my gosh, acceleration is no big deal. My gosh, no bottoming out. This is a fine-tuned machine, man, out of the factory. Holy smokes. Well, I did some minor adjustments, but wow. Woo! Throw it around, baby. Let's break. Good. Breaking is good. Now, with better pads, you could break better. Now, what's amazing about this motor, if you're a racer like me, what I feel is no let up at all. I feel this thing can keep pushing and pushing with no effort. Just give it a little bit and it'll satisfy your desires. Holy smokes. Now you will ask, what's the difference between this and something like the Master Pro? Well, the Master Pro gets there quickly, but it's, it's so smooth. You don't really know the limit. This thing, it has so much good feedback that you can kind of tell when you're pushing it too much. And that's what I love. I need feedback in a wheel. All right, just like the Master Pro and the V13, we're gonna start by this rock. Go! Woo! First things first, acceleration is insane. Holy smokes! I'm already at 45. Yeah, boy! Woo! Birds, watch out. Now, slow down. Oh, yeah, goes, oh! Look at that wide turn. You know why? Because of the tire, dude. I don't want to turn bank too hard because it'll catch and I'll go flipping all over the place. Woo! Oh my gosh. Yo! My main, my only concern is that tire. Woo! Oh my gosh. Wow, yo, <laughs> sorry, between the Master Pro V13 that I've experienced, hands down, this is it, this is it, this is it, buy it, buy it, buy it, freak, this is what I'm talking about, while I love the InMotion V13 for all its technology, and it's power assist, while I love the Master Pro for its smoothness in terms of acceleration and braking. This thing, holy smokes. This reminds me of my MSP, of the EXN, the MSP high speed that is, and the EXN. The Goat with that C40 motor has made it so satisfactory that I don't even care about torque anymore because it's a C40. Not only does it have top speed, but it has freaking acceleration. And remember, that has been an issue for a very long time with most wheels. It's either you compromise and you get speed, as in the case of my high-speed MSP or the EXN, or you compromise and you get the torque EXN or torque MSP. Well, gone are those days. Now we have the glorious C40. The C40 is our savior. Hail C40, baby! <laughs> yes! Now what I can say about this wheel is, the stock pads are an eight out of 10. Do you hear me? An eight out of 10. Which means Big Gold really spent some time on this. Let, let me slow down for a second. Let me show you something. So even with Clark pads, right? Clark pads, they, when they first came out with this, ah, what they had to do was design a pad system that would incorporate the pedals as well. You see this? Look, perfect. I mean, obviously you could tighten it, but this pad setup makes it possible. And look, the Grizzle pads fits as well because all I have to do is adjust it with that center piece right here to incorporate the entire pedal. As big of a pedal as this is, it's in well incorporated, properly incorporated with my setup. I love it. So that's, that's one reason. Another reason is the obvious, being able to jump, right? You need this stud type thing right here to fit right above your instep. So 
if you're like a massive person, it might not fit you, but for me, this is perfect. If I wanted to adjust it to make it more tight, I'll just add some padding here. I, I love the look, so I don't want to change this. I want to keep this and make it work for me, which is why this is added. Man, talk about the C40. C40, baby. Woo. Oh my gosh. Get it. Oh yeah, use my link guys. Use my link in the description to buy this, please. Please use my link. <laughs> Tire is very good for all terrain, as you can see. I don't have to worry about where I am. I could go wherever I want. Woo! Tarmac, whatever, doesn't matter. miles an hour acceleration test we can't really start from zero let's do the best we can go That felt pretty smooth. I was kind of concerned. I thought it was gonna let up, but it didn't. Awesome. Woo! Ha! Yes! Once you get used to 50 miles an hour on this wheel, it gets extremely comfortable to ride. Extremely predictable to ride, you know what I mean? Doing a speed test or acceleration test lets me know a few things. First, I'm in medium mode. Medium mode right now. Sorry, it's blinking. And I know for a fact, if I adjusted these pads how I really want it, tighter, and also if I had it in hard mode with the pedals tilted back at least two degrees, I would be having a ton of fun right now. Like 50 miles an hour would be absolutely nothing. I've ridden the Sherman, I've ridden the Master Pro, I've ridden the MSP, MSX, EXN, I haven't ridden the Master, but I have to say, the EX30 is definitely a beast. It is the one wheel that will rule all these wheels. The Master Pro is a beautiful wheel for ride comfort, acceleration. Like I said earlier, 50 miles an hour feels like it's absolutely nothing because it's so smooth. But if you want pure feedback from the road, the EX30 is the way to go, man. Minus that tire, obviously. That's always in the back of my mind, that tire. The problem with the tire is you can make a mistake below 30 miles an hour, but above 35 miles an hour, especially when you're riding hard, it's not a wheel you want, man. So, in short, the EX30 is the ultimate performance wheel. Yes, it's shorter, it has a smaller package, smaller profile, a C40 motor, holy smokes. The best part about it is when you accelerate, it never feels like it's about to give. But I'll say one thing, in medium mode, while I was doing the 50 mile per hour acceleration test, it did feel as if it was about to give up a little bit, a little bit. I say that because um, at 48 to 50 miles an hour, it felt as if the wheel was going like this. Uh, it's probably in my head, but I'm not sure. I'm pretty sure if this thing was in hard mode, 
I would not have felt that. But I did feel it. I cannot ignore it. Uh, yeah, that's something to take a note of. Look at that big hill. Woo! Let's check that out. Stock pads. Oh. <laughs> Look at this. Literally skid at the last bit. Bottoming, bottoming out. Yeah. Woo. That was actually very beautiful. But the height of the steps were very thin, so pay attention to that. Woo. Like I said, anything that makes you feel uncomfortable about a wheel, fix it. For me, I'd have to get a new tire. Stupid tire. Absolutely hate it. You have no idea how much I hate this tire. I can't even go around here as fast as I want to. Ah, wide turn because of this. Ugh. You have no idea how upset I am right now. I can't ride how I want to ride. This tire is limiting. Need that. Ooh. Yes. Tell you what, this pad setup is nice, but it's not the best. I have to make it more aggressive. It's not an aggressive pad. It's definitely more for comfort than anything. Let's go. Nice. What does safety margin too low mean, guys? What does it mean? I've said it, I've put several settings, 20%, 16%. It still says the same thing at 47, 48 miles an hour. Why does it do that? Anybody knows? Anybody has an idea? Massive hill coming up. Let's go. Well, it's not a massive hill, it's okay. Ugh. Wide turns. Ugh. up that hill dude Woo! I want to make the turn I want to make but this thing is just crazy to me Beeping yet? Oh boy, safety margin. It's very 
playful. Woo! Almost slipped. What the frick? Playful. Uh, this tire does not want to play. Here's the thing, guys. Power delivery, A+. Plus. Acceleration, A+. Plus. Braking, you need a good pad setup for good braking. Fun, A+. Plus. Just got a low battery warning. Two bars right now. Let me slow down for a second. Let me see how many bars show up. Three bars, all right. Anyway, guys, this wheel, beautiful. Woo! All right, guys, so that's the review. Nice and spiffy. So who is this wheel for? Rhetorically answering, honestly, anyone that can afford it. Now, new riders are gonna love this because of its size. And yes, it's not a V10F or V8, one of those new wheels, you know, V11. Uh, it is 100 pounds, 3,600 watt hours, more than you'll ever need as a new rider. But you know what? You can grow with it, and that's the best part about it. Now, it is capable of both off-roading and extreme street riding, um, as I've demonstrated. Jumps, mm, sure, you could, but extreme jumps, I would stay away from. I don't recommend that. Uh, not only uh, does the travel under suspension not compare to something like the KS22 or the all-new Bigot Extreme with their 130 plus millimeters of travel, um, it's extremely heavy as well. So. I'm not sure how much PSI you could put in here to the max, but in either case, it won't really matter if you plan on doing extreme four foot, six foot jumps, unless you're an expert and you know how to land it instead of dropping it. Either way, I would not recommend it for new, new riders for crazy jumping only because of the weight. But in the end, the EX30, in my opinion, now I haven't ridden all wheels, but I do like specs. I have to say, this is one of the most well-suited all-around wheel on the market right now and that is if you're planning on having just one machine now if you do plan on getting a second wheel for purely jumps and tricks and stuff like that the KS22 and I like the specs of the the Goad uh, Extreme these two wheels would probably make a good second choice but for me, someone like me who loves speed, who loves the MSP uh, high speed, who loves the EXN that lack torque, that was one of my main concerns about the EXN was its low pedal and lack of torque. I did like the high speed, but if you're at a high speed, like say 40 miles an hour or 45 miles an hour, and you decide to torque it just to give it a little more, you could, you'll always feel that forward dip. Not with this, not with this. This is the closest you'll get to flying, literally minus the Master Pro, but this thing has no lack of power. Power delivery on this is, oh my gosh, big gold to the next level. Okay, so that's it for me, guys. I hope you enjoy this review. Um, I highly recommend it. Use my link in the description. Also check out my Teespring store and support the channel. Happy riding, guys. See you next time.